Over the past couple of weeks, we have seen where Paul, in his letter to the Church of Ephesus, he has been focusing in on love and unity. Those have been the key and central issues that, that Paul is focused on with this church. Our lesson here this week, it brings again love and unity to the forefront. As our lesson this week, it goes over scripture that is some of the most controversial, some of the most misunderstood scripture that we find in the Bible. Our lesson this week, there in the fifth chapter of Ephesians and there in the 21st verse, we'll see that it opens with Paul encouraging those who are in the church of Ephesus to submit to one another in the fear of God. Now, submit to one another. This, this verse, it is the key verse of, of our lesson this week in which in what we are focusing in on here, where we are talking about love. And in the love, Paul said that we are to submit to one another. Love, in Paul's mind, love is supposed to be submissive. But, but when we think about that word submit, submissive, submission, we think of it with such a negative connotation, don't we? When we think of submission, when we think of being submissive, we think of servitude. We think of one serving a master. We think of, of one ruling over another. Is that what Paul was saying? Is, is Paul saying that, that one should have rule over another? Is, is Paul saying that, that we need to, to have a master ruling over one, and one being like a slave? Is, is that what Paul was saying? Because that is, what, that is what we think of when we hear that word. But let us remember our lesson from last week. Let us remember what is said in the fourth chapter of Ephesians and the first verse, where Paul, he encouraged the believers of the church of Ephesus to walk worthy of the calling. What is that calling? That calling is a calling of loving God and then loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. That's that familiar lesson. That's that familiar scripture that you always hear me reference in which Jesus taught himself. When we take a look at and remember the, the 12th verse in the fourth chapter of Ephesians, we remember that in our love, that we are supposed to edify one another. In other words, we are supposed to uplift in love. We are supposed to elevate each other in, in our love. We are supposed to, again, help each other to prosper, to profit one another to levels that that we may think that are unimaginable to levels that we may think uh, is is unattainable but love is supposed to uplift love is supposed to elevate to those levels that that we think are unimaginable submissive love i want you to understand today that it is and it should never be oppressive can can one who is a master can one who's a master truly uplift one who they think of as, as a slave? No, it, it, it doesn't work that way. Our love is again supposed to keep this in mind. It is supposed to, to uplift our love. It is supposed to elevate. And again, that love, it should be submissive. So we need to, to figure out, we need to try and understand today what Paul meant by by how we are supposed to submit to one another. And we'll do that here. As again, we'll take a look at scripture there in the 22nd verse where Paul, he turns his attention to the love of the husband and the wife. He turns his attention to the household where Paul says there in the 22nd verse, he says to wives, submit to your own husbands. This is, again, one of the most controversial verses that we have in the Bible, in Scripture. This is one that, that women will turn away from, but this is one that husbands have misused for, for so long. What does Paul mean here when, again, he says their wives submit to your own husbands? Does this mean that, that wives are supposed to obey their husbands without without a whimper, without a thought, whatever their husbands say, the wives are supposed to do without question. Is that what Paul meant by that statement? Let us remember going all the way back to the book of Genesis. You read, it says that God created for man one to be a helper comparable 
to him. A helper, woman, when God created woman, he created for man a helper who is comparable to him. Keep that in mind. Now, when we get back over to Paul's writing, when you take a look there at that 25th verse, I want to skip down to the 25th verse here. We'll see where Paul, he said to husbands, he wrote to husbands, love your wives is what Paul said. Love your wives just as Christ. We must add this on. He said, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave Christ gave, Paul said, himself to her. In order for you to understand what Paul is saying here about love, about unity, about marriage, you have to understand that Paul was speaking of, of marriage and unity from the standpoint of how Christ loves his bride, how Christ loved his wife, who is the wife who is the bride of, of Christ. The wife, the bride of Christ is the church. And so how did Christ, how does Christ treat the church? What did Christ do for the church? Well, in his love for his bride, in his love for, for the church, I want you to understand today that Christ gave himself for the church. Christ, in other words, he submitted himself for the church. He gave everything for his bride. He gave everything for the church. And so when Paul is talking about marriage, when he's talking about love, and when he's talking about submission, he is basing it off of what Christ did out of love for us. What Christ did out of love for his bride and for, for the church. Christ gave himself, he gave it all for, for us. He laid down his life for the church. And so where Paul says to wives, submit to husbands, he also says the same thing to husbands as well. Husbands are to give everything for, for their wife. Husbands are to give themselves for, for their wives. Husbands are to, in other words, also live in submission for the wife as well. It's not supposed to be as one-sided as, as it has been portrayed for centuries and centuries when it comes to this verse that is so, so misunderstood. Paul, in talking about submissive love, is saying one must submit to the other, and the other, again, is supposed to live in submission as well. And they're supposed to come together in one, in that submissive love. That is how love is supposed to work. When Paul is talking about submissive love, he's talking about a deep love. He's talking about a love where, where both are committed to one another. He's not talking about where one is committed to the other and the other is not so committed. Love is supposed to work in harmony. There's supposed to be unity to where again, both parties are committed together to be together, to be that holy union, to be one. That is what Paul had in mind. You see, if Christ, if Christ lives in submission to, to us, if he lives in submission to his bride, if he lives in submission to his wife, if he lives in submission to the church, should the husband not live in submission to, to his wife? And should the wife not live in submission to, to her husband? That to me doesn't make much sense. If Christ if he gives himself for us, if he lives in submission to us, then yes, we certainly should turn around and live in submission to one another. The husband should certainly live in submission to the wife and the wife should certainly live in submission to the husband. So when we go back up to the 23rd verse, we see Paul, he spoke of the husband being the head. Now I want you to be play close attention to that verse. He didn't say that the husband was the head of the house. We always use that for argument. He said that the husband is supposed to be the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. Let's expound on that even more. When we take a look at the 24th verse, we'll see that Paul, he then added to this thought. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be their own husbands in everything. 
again, this is a scripture that, that has been heavily misunderstood. And again, the reason why it is so misunderstood is because in our scripture here, we see where, again, Paul has been comparing husbands to Christ. So husbands are to, again, move with the love of Christ. There is, I want you to understand today, a great responsibility that husbands have. If husbands are to be the heads of wives, then, then husbands, again, they must have a good head on their own shoulders. They must make sure that they are walking in a direction that is going to be healthy, not just for themselves, but for, for their wife and then for their children as well, is what we see Paul speaking of here. Paul, he is looking again at love. He's looking at marriage. He's looking at unity here. He's looking at it not from a worldly, not from a fleshly viewpoint, but from a spiritual viewpoint. So the husband, if the husband is the head of the wife and the husband is being compared to Christ, the husband should walk in a Christ-like manner, right? Paul is saying that the husband should walk in a Christ-like manner. Their, their direction, the direction in which they, they move in should not be according to the world. It should be according to, to the Lord. No husband should believe for one second that if they run off and if they go and do something that is foolish, that their wife should follow right behind them without thought, without question. No, the wife should, should absolutely question what it is that the husband is doing. If you're, if you don't have a good head on your shoulders, then absolutely nobody should submit to, to the way, to the way in which you are going. They should absolutely question it. So again, husbands, make sure that, that you have a good head on your shoulder. And again, make sure that you are loving your wife, that you are deeply committed to your wives. And when you do this, then yes, absolutely. The wife should submit to the way in which you are going. We'll see there in the 27th verse that, that Paul, he points to how Christ moved in, in a manner to present a wife that is glorious without spot, without wrinkle or blemish. We'll see there in the 28th verse that Paul, he said that husbands should move in that same manner once again, as I said. He said husbands ought to lo love their own wives as their own bodies. And so again, that, that brings up what Jesus taught about love, where again, we are to love the Lord with our whole heart, as I said at the start of this lesson, and we are to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. If you love yourself, then you ought to treat others as you would treat yourself. If you honor yourself, then yes, you should honor those that are around you. That's what Paul had in mind here. Husbands, again, can't be upset with wives if, if, if they are moving in a direction that is not healthy for anyone. If you move in a direction that is wicked, not holy and not righteous. Again, you cannot be upset if your wife does not desire to move in that direction. If she doesn't want that for herself and if she doesn't want that for children, the kids as well, husbands cannot be upset with that. This passage of scripture here from the fifth chapter of Ephesians, it has for so long, it has been misunderstood and it has been misused. It has been used in a manner to, to abuse women. It has been used in a manner to abuse wives, to, to make it seem like only wives are supposed to be subject to, to husbands. When the truth of the matter is that Paul was really getting on husbands in this scripture. He was, he was making it well known to husbands and unfortunately this has been so misunderstood but it is very clear when you study this scripture that Paul was getting on husbands to, to live in submission to their house. Husbands are to give everything for their house. They're supposed to give everything for, for their wives. They're supposed to give everything for, for their children. I, I think of how, how my dad gave for, for, for mom and, and for, for me, my brother, my sister, how, how he, would get, he would be the last to, to get anything. 
the w mom and us was always taken care of before, before he would even take care of himself. And it seems nowadays that it's so backwards in the house where, where we are more selfish than we are in love towards one another. And, and we wonder why no one is prospering in the world today. We wonder why, why it is so one-sided. We wonder why love seemingly is so combative. It is so combative because our love is not a love that is submissive to where we live committed to, to each other. In order for us to correct the pathway of love that, that we are going down right now, we have to learn how to live deeply in love towards each other, where we are committed not simply to ourselves, but we are committed, deeply committed to the success, to the prospering of one another. That when we when we can get to that, when we can get to the level to where we live in submission to each other, then again, we as as husband and wife and we as a household, we will be able to reach levels again that we would think are unimaginable. And so again, thinking of the household, thinking how we are to live in submission to one another, while Paul has been speaking about the husband and the wives, when we turn over to the sixth chapter of Ephesians and we look at the first through the fourth verse, we'll see that Paul, he had a word for children as well. We'll see there in the first verse, that Paul, he turned his attention to the children and he said to children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Again, notice the difference here between what Paul said to wives when he said, wives submit to your husbands. But then he turns around here in this sixth chapter and he says there to children, obey your parents. Again, there is a difference here to, to where, where Paul is saying to children, you have to be obedient right? He didn't say that to wives. Again, with husbands and wives, he's talking about being committed to one another. But children, there's no option here. Paul says, obey, be obedient to your parents. Okay. And so parents are certainly over the children. It really is a relationship of, of master and, and servant when it comes to the parent and and the child. There in the second verse, we'll see a very familiar commandment that Paul references here where he says to the children, honor your father and mother, which Paul points out is the first commandment of premise there. And then there in the third verse, he says that this premise again, when you are uh, honoring your father and your mother, he says, it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth, which again, that goes all the way back to the commandment of the 10 commandments. And so children are to, again, live in obedience. They are to, again, follow what it is that their parents instruct them, which again, it, it, it talks to the responsibility of parenthood to where you don't want to lead your child astray. And so it gets back to the husband being the head of the wife, right? the husband ought not desire to lead the wife astray. And so children, you are to, to be obedient to your parents. Hopefully the parents are, are taking the children in a direction that again is one that the children will prosper, one that is healthy for, for a child. I remember, I remember growing up how I was terrified of dad. I, I was terrified of mom telling dad, uh, you know, something that I did and I was acting up. And, and again, when mom would say, I'm, I'm gonna I'm a let your dad know, oh man, that, that, sent, that sent shivers down, down my body. To again, where I knew dad would get on me. And I, again, I, I don't like to try and talk about how, how parents are raising their children today, but you look around at how, how children are acting today and it, it makes you wonder. It makes you wonder what, what is going on, why, why do children act the way that they act? I, I, you know, it, it was no really no different when, when I was growing up as a child as well, but there was a fear factor between uh, myself, uh, my cousins, and even my friends growing up where, where when a parent would show up to school, every kid would go, ooh, you in trouble. You know, there, there was something about that 
that, I don't know if that still exists today. There in the fourth verse, Paul spoke on that, where, where Paul, he said, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. So as I said here, this lesson, it again, it focuses on love. It focuses in on unity, edification, that is uplifting, elevating, that is all in mind as well. But also what is truly in mind here is responsibility. The responsibility to, to what we have to one another, right? The responsibility that the husband has to the wife, the responsibility that the wife has to the husband, and then the responsibility that the parents have over the children as well. To where again, we should want what is best for each other we we should not we should not love each other in a manner to where we where we are oppressing to where we are being toxic that's not love love again should be submissive to where we are deeply committed to 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 profiting each other to to where we are not going to lead one another astray that is what paul had in mind as we again go over love as we go over unity here in in our sunday school lesson this week there is a heavy weight that is on our shoulder that we can help each other bear again if we truly love each other and if we truly uplift one another so do that today move in a manner to where you are deeply committed and again i hope that the one who you are deeply committed to the ones that you are deeply committed to I hope that they would return that commitment back to you as well. And when that is done, again, we will reach levels that it, we may think is unimaginable. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. Now, if you haven't done so already, I ask all of you to, to follow our channel. Be sure that you follow this channel so that you don't miss a Sunday school lesson, so that you don't miss a Bible study, so that you don't miss a sermon or a food for thought. Be sure that you are following this channel today.